Good morning and thank you for joining us on Aldersgate's Lenten Prayer Project. I pray that the tidbits that you've learned, the tools that have been placed into your toolbox, the prayers, um, the presence of God, the, the, um, the way that you pray, I pray that all of these things have opened you, your heart and your ears and your mind so that you can be walking just a little bit closer with Jesus. That's what we all want, isn't it? This week, our focus has been on a prayer called With Open Hands. It is from Henry Nowen's book, The Beloved. Susan Black did a beautiful job giving us the context this past Monday um, of this prayer. One of the things that she mentioned was that uh, sometimes we pray with clenched fists. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes our posture of our whole body is that our body and our fists and our minds are just closed and we want to keep these things from God that um, may have hurt us, may have bruised us, may have you know, taken us off the path. Um, whatever reason you want to keep that fist closed, that is also a posture of prayer. You may not realize it, but this is one way to pray. This is another way to pray in which we open our hands, our palms upward, our eyes and our hearts, our minds open to receive what God wants to give us. Closed fist, we keep it to ourselves. When we open our fist, we can release it so that we can receive something new and holy and wonderful. Today, Tim Tatum, one of the ministers on the staff at Aldersgate, um, is going to talk to us about the posture of prayer. He did this, he, he shared this in a sermon a few weeks ago in the worship service, and I bring this to you with all of the delight and joy in which he um, brought with such sincerity and clarity about the posture of prayer. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm one of the pastors here at Aldersgate. If you haven't spent much time with me, you might not know this, but uh, I am a distractible person, and people in my life know this. When I'm doing a youth lesson, uh, it is not difficult for the youth to get me on some tangent or to raise their hands and ask a question and interrupt me, and I have trouble sometimes uh, not chasing that rabbit down sometimes a very deep hole, and uh, I have to find my way back to what, what was I talking about? Maybe you have that kind of experience yourself. Well, I think we can also have that in other areas of our life like prayer. So when I enter into a time of prayer, when I need to be intentional about a time of prayer, there are some things that I need to do to sort of stack the deck in my favor a bit. I need to adopt certain practices. I need to set aside specific times to do these kinds of things in my own life. And I hope that that'll be a blessing to you as well, because I think we all need a little bit of help dealing with the distractions that come with the intent that we have to pray. Because I have had a lot of times in my life when I have wanted to be very intentional about prayer time. And if I don't have some sort of plan or some sort of process to be intentional, there's a pretty good chance that when I, I go and try and do the prayer time, I'm going to find myself being quite distracted. So I hope this helps you. Let's not ever forget how important our posture can be when we want to help our minds focus. One of the simplest things that we can do is simply to kneel before the Lord, to kneel by our bed, to kneel by the couch in our room, and use those as places and postures to enter into a time of uh, supplication or a time of intentionality to get our bodies in the right place so that our minds can get in the right place. As I mentioned, posture is very important, and so here I am at the kneeling rail in the sanctuary. I could just as well be in the fellowship hall, or like I said, it could be simply in my room or, or on, at my couch. So I invite you, wherever you are, to maybe put yourself in a new posture. If you're sitting on the couch, that's fine. You don't have to, but maybe you want to kneel. Maybe you want to engage in a new way for prayer this morning in your home. And now let us pray the prayer uh, that inspired Henry Nowen's beloved. Dear God, 
I am so afraid to open my clenched fists. Who will I be when I have nothing left to hold on to? Who will I be when I stand before you with empty hands? Please help me to gradually open my hands to discover that I am not what I own, but what you want to give me. And what do you want to to give me but love, unconditional, everlasting love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, know that you are His beloved. Amen.